Hey, Misfits. I'm your host, Melinda. Thank you for joining Mystery Loves Company. Now hold on to your butts as we go on another mysterious adventure. Let's see what today has in store for us. Hi. Hi, guys. I'm Melinda. I'm Hannah. And today we are going to tell you a little bit of Idaho lore. When I say we, I mean she. I know. The person that doesn't live here. <laughs> the one that does not live in Idaho. I know, but I can consult you. on. You're my fact checker. Oh. Mostly about geography. Oh, we we're not talking like north, <laughs> south, east, west, right? Like never eat yeah. soggy waffles. Well, yeah. <laughs> not that going, so maybe there's that's a start. Um, McCall is north. Okay, we got that. And uh, Twin Falls is, is it south of here? No. Twin Falls is east. Never eat soggy waffles east okay okay we got got that we got that figured out yeah so uh first up we're talking about um the shoshone ice caves um specifically um the princess edaho uh of the shoshone people that's not princess idaho no it's 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 close to edaho is it edaho or edaho 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 yeah okay um yeah there's like a elementary school called Idaho, and it's named after her. And that's mm. how they pronounce it. They, they were very clear about that. And I was like, thank you for clarifying the pronunciation. Idaho's own little princess, Idaho. Yeah. So cute. But, um, so just start now explaining the ice caves. So there, it's a really cool place that I would like to visit, but I looked it up, and I think it's just for, like, the summer months that they do tours, probably because it's so heckin' cold. Well, it is really heckin' cold. I've been there a few times. It's oh, awesome. Yeah. Like, all the stalagmites and stalactites and the different cut. Like, it's it seems cool. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And a little bit creepy. Like, mm-hmm. going on, like, they've got these ladder. It's not a ladder. It's like a, like, you walk on it. So, kind of like a bridge, but it's got ladder steps on it. Oh, like, yeah. one of those slat, like, slats. Like mm-hmm. a slatted bridge. Like, like the iron, not iron, but like. You know. No, it's wood. Oh, it's wood. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a little creepy. Um, I did hear that they closed it down for a while because I think Mm -hmm. that, um, like, the ice was trying to melt or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, someone, whoever bought it in, like, the 40s was trying to, like, capitalize off of this tourist attraction. Right. So, they overdeveloped it AF to the point where, like, pretty much all the ice melted. So then some guy was like, no, no, we can't do that. And so he bought it like 10 years later and then redid it somehow to where the ice grew back. <laughs> it's, it's iced again. But I mean, in recent years, I think like oh, it really? was, yeah, like they closed it down for a couple of years recently. And I think judging off of like the website, I think that, um, it might be open to tourists again, but only during yeah, it's season. Yeah, like, like October. Yeah, is what I saw. So, if you're in the area in the summertime, definitely check it out, especially because it gets really freaking hot here. It does get really hot. hot. We're high desert, and it's a uh, warm. No bueno. But um, so how these came to be? So there is a volcano. Um, I did not look at in relative more geography problems that we keep happening. But near there, there's a volcano called Black Butte that Mm -hmm. erupted like some odd, like 5,000 years ago. Right. And how, so there's multiple caves in the area. These are just the ones that got touristified, um, probably are like the most structurally sound. Mm -hmm. Um, But basically there was like underground tubes that were formed from lava flowing. and because they're so low, they're like at a hundred foot elevation, they get really cold. Yep. And so that's what causes them to freeze over. And then also it's because it goes up to the surface. You're just getting kind of like a cool jet type situation. 
But um, it says that it can self-regulate its temperature between like 19 to 31 degrees Fahrenheit mm -hmm. around. So that's why it's nice. I can attest to that. It's really cold in there. And I always tell you to dress warm, but it's also like if you're going in like August, you're like, I'm not going to be. Yeah, just <laughs> take a coat. Just yeah. take a coat. It's chilly. Um, uh, the, t the tunnel is like 1,700 feet long, which miles wise, I have no idea mm. how long that is. I did not convert that. On my phone, I can't look it up. But 1,700 feet long, I'm assuming that's like roughly a mile. Because if you're going down, you can't really go super, super far into the earth. You'll Okay, up. <laughs> trying to take myself back to school. A mile is, isn't it 15, That's what 15, I'm, it's like 1575 or something some, like that. Somewhere right around in that, oh my God, I've We're been out of school a so long time. It's fine. <laughs> We're doing our best, but I think it's roughly a mile long just because it's like you can't go too far down in there. Okay. No, I can't remember how many oh. feet a mile is. Oh, no. I'm fine. I'll be fine later. Okay, well, I'll put it right here once I'm editing and I can look it up. <laughs> I'll be like, ah. I do feel really good about 1500. That feels good. I just don't know, like, the exactness. And what. Yeah. So. But, um, yeah, so people having tours of this. Um, so, yeah, I saw, like, roughly so. The Native Americans, Shoshone ice caves, Shoshone people, were using these caves as early refrigeration and then showed the settlers how to use it. And then, yeah, like late 1800s, once it became, uh, was it mining or logging? Oh, I can't remember. One of those Northwest industries. I mean, we have mining. both. So it was, I'll bet you, I'll bet you it was probably mining yeah, up, in tw up in Twin. Yeah. So whatever industry town um, just started booming. Um, it also kind of helped, um, level out the population density because people weren't dying of dysentery <laughs> and foodborne illness. So important. They found a refrigerator underground. Really? Very cool. Love sassy little life, life hack from the natives. Thank you. So, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, it became a tourist attraction, like, throughout the 1900s, and then, like, closer to now, it's just a tourist attraction at this point. Um, so, interestingly enough, um, when I was looking up Princess Idaho, um, I can't find a lot about her. Um, part of the reason, I think, is because in, like, Native American culture, their stories are told orally. They don't keep a lot of like physical record like logs down so okay. that could be an issue or it could be that um you know that her story got lost in the who said lost in the sauce lost in the lost sauce in the is fine you know well, whichever which same difference because you know the so the legend of her connected to the ice caves was that i guess she was a wonderful lady in their community um, I don't think they had princesses, but, like, that's just what her title was given to her. Well, I mean, in, in the Shoshone, it's a tribe, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you've got your chiefs, and, I mean, you you do have Indian princesses, and, um, I mean, I've never never really heard of a native prince, but I exactly. have heard of princesses. So, <laughs> maybe maybe that is a thing. Like, maybe it's the daughter of the chief or something like that. Let us know. Yeah, Correct yeah, us if we're wrong. Know. Um, so, uh, but she was super loved by her tribe, her community. And so, um, she had an untimely death, was very young and still very beautiful. So they wanted to preserve her. And so they buried her in the ice caves, like way in there. I would hate that so, f so freaking much. Yeah. I so. hate being cold. So to preserve her, which I'm sure even still she looks probably very snatched because ice is very good at preserving bodies like in Dila Pass. Oh, you know, yeah. Looking at all that stuff, you know, with like everyone getting lost in the snow and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, but um, no one's found her remnants. Um, but so being that sorry to interrupt, no but being that there wasn't a whole lot of information on Princess Idaho. Yeah. Idaho. Um, 
we don't know how she died. Like, no. we just know she died at a young age. Yeah, just because the whole motivation of keeping her in the caves is because she's still pretty. Yeah. She died. Okay. So. Okay. That, that's, yeah. I, I was looking. I was looking for anything. I'm like, I need to know. So that's that was the motivation to keeping her in the caves. It is told that her ghost, like her spirit, is still trapped in there and she wants out and she's like let me out but she's not mean about it she's just very like kind of like woeful just like please i want to escape please let me out so it's like so is it like the banshee of the what is it the deadlands or whatever the badlands Badlands, where she just cries she's not crying she's just like oh please please let me out (laughs) <laughs> Did she sing it? She doesn't, she doesn't <laughs> sing it. That's just me. But like, she's she's like, like she probably doesn't like being trapped there either. I, hell no! Yeah, I would so, hate that shit. Yeah. So she's like, hey guys, um, yeah, let's not do this. Um, so not a lot of tourists say that they have like firsthand encounters with her, but the staff members do because they can hear. Like, after hours, once all the tourists have gone, they can hear footsteps in the caves. They can hear, like, muddled voices. They've seen shadows before. So, it's like, okay, that makes sense. And also, like, I'm sure throughout the years, other lost souls have, you know, unfortunately probably didn't make it out of there. Oh, yeah. It's an ice cave. <laughs> um, so, towards the entrance of the cave... Um, there's a carbon composite that is shaped like a bearded man. And so he's known as the gatekeeper. And uh, a lot of people who like are, you know, sensitive to the paranormal or energies, they say that he has real bad vibes. The gatekeeper is scary. So so one of the things that kind of makes your spine clench. Yeah. You see it like your stomach drops. And then once you get further into the tunnel, though, the energy is less nefarious because the princess isn't a nefarious spirit. She just wants out. (laughs) She's like, please. So I wonder if there's such negative energy around this uh, resin sculpture. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder if it was built after a certain person or built for a certain person or in remembrance of a formation. It just happened. Do you not remember seeing that there? Well, no, it's not that. But what do you mean? It's a formation. It just happened. It literally, it's just like a rock formation. That looks like a man. That looks like a man. Yeah. Oh, so it's not a it's, sculpture. It's, it's a nature. It is naturally made. Yeah. So he's like a spooky bearded man that a lot of people are like, that guy gives me bad vibes. I'm shooketh. And, and no, I don't remember seeing that there. And I think oh. probably because at that point in time in my life, I was so aloof to yeah. shit. I was just like, completely yeah. aloof. And I had a toddler on my hip. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll take you out of anything. But. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to go back this summer. So, um, there's like a theory too that like, you know, the gatekeeper is the reason why she can't get out. Oh, like he keeps her spirit trapped. Like he probably doesn't. He's like a bouncer where he's like, all right. (laughs) He's a bouncer. But he's also like, "Mm, lady can't leave. It's my job. So, um, but how shitty it is super shitty. And also what makes me think like, Hey, there's probably not just the princess that's in there is because like the farther you go in, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. But, like, if you go in there and turn off your flashlight, it's, like, so dark that yeah. you get, like, suffocated. It's, like, claustrophobic at how dark it is. And I'm, like, getting oh, goosebumps, like, thinking about being in there. <laughs> oh, my God. Because, like... On a slatted bridge. Yeah. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. And it's cold, too. Yeah. And, like... I'm sure when you're in there, can you hear like wind going through sure. the tunnel? You can, okay. you can hear the okay, tunnel so noises. Quiet, Cause that would also kill me. Well, it, yeah, it's not silent. You do get the, the tunnel noises, but, um, I mean, that could also add to the eeriness, right? Yeah. It's also like, you know, those, have you ever been in a sub, uh, sensory deprivation tank? No. God. Why would I be in one of those? Yeah. It's terrible. Well, they offer it as like, it's like a trendy spa thing where it's like, 
a little like like a little like tank that you can get in. It has like a it has like a little pot, I guess. And it's full of really, really, really salty water. So you float. Is that so the thing I saw ended. on Twenty Eight Days Haunted? Where he was like numbing all of his senses so that he could wake up yes. his psychic yes. abilities. Yes. Is that what that's that was? Exactly what that is. My God, I'm that's totally exactly gonna do that. that so spas do that. There are certain I'm places. Fully intrigued. Yeah, I know about where I live because I live in like the Seattle area. There's a bunch oh. of weird spa shit. Well, when you come to visit me, we can try it. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do, we'll do our thoughts. But um, well, I was just thinking about that because it's like. There are, like, certain places in the world where it's, like, the most quiet place in the world, the darkest place in the world, you know, where it's, like, you lose so much of your sense that it makes you, like, kind of wacky. Mm. So it's, like, I can't even imagine, like, you're going down there with your like, oil lamp, you drop it, it shatters. And then all do? of a sudden you're fucked. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's, uh... That's kind of like um, kind of putting myself in the shoes of people back then. Of yeah. Like who else would be in there? But princess is like a running theory. But also it's like I just think that like definitely pro- people probably got lost in there. Yeah. In the early days. Or they would even. I'll bet that some people. I mean, I don't know if you'd phrase it ever probably get hypothermia you go down there you get oh, lost totally. and end up with hypothermia and then you can't get out yeah or you it's fall too dark hurt yourself yeah yeah that's crabby that's shitty how, okay how warm and fuzzy mm-hmm. it's warm and fuzzy good way to go so um but yeah that's all the backstory i have of the um the ice caves but, um, yeah, I would love to check it out. If you have gone and experienced something, please let us know. I tried to find, like, on the tourist websites if, like, anyone left any comments, and I didn't really see anything. So I'd love to hear it. It really is cool. The ice caves really yeah. are cool. They're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If you're in Idaho, I suggest you go check them out. They're awesome. If they're open. Cool. Well, we can... Move on to the mountain dwarfs. Owyhee Mountains. Owyhee Mountain Dwarfs. Yeah, buddy. Owyhee Mountains are no joke. Alrighty. So, um, you'll have to help me with this because there were certain parts of the story that I was missing. Will do, Buckaroo. Um, so, what I have found, um, the Owyhee Mountain Dwarfs are small humanoid-like creatures, um, obviously found in the Owyhee Mountains in Idaho. Um... So the creatures, they have long tails, apparently, that wrap around along their bodies to make themselves not stand out as much, Mm -hmm. um, despite them being so small. They're like two feet tall. Um, So, oh, sorry. So they're also known to be really strong for their their size. Yeah. Because, you know, living in the mountains can't really be super convenient being a tiny guy. guy. Um, and when we say mountains, the Owyhee Mountains are not like big foresty mountains. They're not. It's high desert. And oh, so okay. it's a shit ton of sagebrush and a shit ton of cliffs and craters, like lava craters, um, oh, volcanic craters. Okay. And like it is just when you think of a desert, like when you think of a high desert and lots of plateaus, like we've got buttes, like lizard butte and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's all like that. It is not foresty, beautiful mountains. It is it's a little of... bit desolate almost. Okay. That makes a lot more sense actually to like, we'll get into it more, but yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. Cause I like, I've never been there. So I was just trying to piece that together, but I was picturing like the rest of the state. It was just forest. Yeah, you're deep, picturing deep forest. all of our beautiful, beautiful mountains. The yes. Owyhee Mountains are very different. Okay. So there's that. Um, they're able to take down a deer, and that's usually their main source of prey. Um, oh, and also humans, <laughs> specifically children, because size, I'm assuming. Also, ch- children be kind of dumb sometimes. 
Well, and they don't fight back as hard, and they usually aren't yeah. carrying weapons, right? So True. they're a little bit easier to take down mm -hmm. than an adult. And if you're out in the Owyhee Mountains, like, you're prepared for rattlesnakes and scorpions. So uh, you've got your, you got your weapons to uh, kill some shit. Well, I'm going back to, like, their tails. I'm just trying to, like, get fix picture what they would look like to like conceal themselves yeah It'd be like fleshy because I'm, I'm picturing like an armadillo like situation oh i didn't i pictured more of a fur oh yeah that would make sense too for the color yeah uh so armadillo scaly would kind of make sense if they were trying if it Armadillos was like a also have hair too blended yeah they do like, just little patches here and there. They're mammals. You know? Oh, we're learning things today. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just I just pictured it as fur because, well, because... Tails. Tails. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to picture that. <laughs> just, like, two feet tall, tails, most of their body. Like, hey, that's what I mean, I did picture it really, really long, and I pictured it, like, starting off pretty thick, like, yeah. ass-size thick. <laughs> right? <laughs> Boy, thick. Thick. <laughs> like, like Mothman's booty. Oh my God. <laughs> Caked up king. <laughs> oh my God. But, um, well, geez, they eat kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for them. It's not funny. I just love how you did that. They eat kids. Oh, so what are you going to do? <laughs> it's a treat. And, um, you know, the Shoshone and the Vanacock. Well, that's not how you pronounce it. Ban ban knock. Bannock. Bannock. Jesus. Whew, let's start that over again. The Shoshone and the Bannock natives were the first, you know, people to run across them, which I feel so bad. That sucks. Where you're just kind of just going about your day and you're like, what the fuck is even this? This thing's Why? biting my damn ankles. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> just little hellions. I just picture like gremlins. That's like the only thing that I can think of. With a long tail. Little gremlins, yeah. Mean assholes. Um, so sometimes they're naked. Sometimes they're wearing um, weird attire. Literally says that. Weird attire. Like a gunny sack? Maybe. Probably just anything just to keep them warm. Yeah. Kind of whatever they okay. can find. Um, huh. Yeah, so besides them being small... And long tails. Well, I mean, I guess if they're humanoid esque, yeah. then. I'm assuming they have hands. Like opposable thumbs? Probably. Maybe like um, like the four fingers. <laughs> like this. Because, <laughs> well, like, in cartoons, you know, where, like, when they, like, do alien creatures, they never have thumbs, they just have four fingers. So that's what I'm picturing right now. Super accurate, I'm sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I don't know. Because I feel like. If they had thumbs, they'd probably be taking this down. Or at least making their presence known a little bit more. <laughs> you know? Thumbs give you power. You know? They do. I mean, well, I mean... It's where we are maybe, today, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you got thumbs... You're set, buddy. You are. <laughs> sorry, sorry if you don't. Um, okay. Well, I do want to hit on really quick. So, um, when... These were first like thought of in the thirties, right? In the in the thirties when these first came about, mm -hmm. the um the tribes the tribes would not let their children go by the volcanic craters. Oh yeah, that's probably for the best. And but they they seemed to think that these dwarves really kind of hung out around the volcan volcanic craters. Did I say volcanic earlier? Because that. Volcanic. I, volcanic. Oh. I don't even know where the hell that came from, if that is what I said, but let me correct it. Volcanic. Um, but yeah, it seemed that they were mostly around the volcanic craters, which are, there's a ton of them out mm -hmm. in the Owyhees, like in the Murphy area and everything. Yeah. There, we, used, we used to play in them all the time as kids. I mean, mom didn't know because we were, we had to stay away from them too. And maybe it's because of these stories, but we were not allowed by the volcanic craters, well, but also it's like you're basically just putting yourself in a hole. Not yeah, really which get out if there's is a situation. fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's pretty fun. But 
yeah, anyway, so anytime the mm -hmm. kids from the tribes would go around a volcanic crater, they would disappear. Yeah. So there is something to be said about the volcanic craters out there, which makes this two stories about volcanoes in Idaho. It is. Um, and also, probably super obvious, but just saying out loud, these volcanoes are not active currently. No, okay, they're not currently active. I mean, because in Washington, you know, Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier are both technically right. active volcanoes. Yeah. They don't do anything yet. Yet. God. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so... There, this could be a little hokey because there's a picture. I'll link it, but um, it, it doesn't seem very real. But um, proof of these creatures, um, there was like a mummified humanoid, mm -hmm. um, like kind of little guy that was found in one of the caves, um, not in Idaho, but in Wyoming, but close by um, in the 30s. Um, and they called him Pedro the Mountain Mummy. I think Pedro, cute. the mountain mummy. That sounds like a Willie Nelson album. So he was mummified. Yeah. So if they found it in a cave, probably was pretty preserved because cold. Was it in an ice cave? They did not specify that. They just said cave. cave. Huh. So yeah, that's intriguing. That, that, that poses a lot of questions, and right. so so instead of it being like, oh, it was probably just a little kid because it's like humanoid, but uh, from some sort of forensic testing, they deemed it, the creature to be about sixty-five years old. So it was not a child. It was not a child. Not a little. Boy. It was a little it was adult. A little adult guy with a tail, and. Uh, the cause of death um, of this being was it had severe head trauma. It was like its whole back of the skull was bashed in. So, must have wow. taken Bill might have pissed somebody off. I don't know. Maybe he was trying to take a child and, and they said, no, no. daddy was like, motherfucker, mm -mm. beat Not your ass. Um, and then um, kind of to back up the uh, like carnivorous mm. cannibalist type theory um the mummy also had severely pointed teeth it was like they had all canines like a carnivore so all spooky all pointed teeth all pointed teeth found in a cave in wyoming interesting but that's also not very far no so, no it isn't i had a theory while i was thinking about this i forgot to write it down but um so, I don't know if you know this, we haven't talked about this yet, but um, they have found a lot of cave systems in, like, the Appalachian Mountains and the Crazy Mountains. So, a lot of, like, mountain ranges, there's a lot of, like, cave systems, which is why a bunch of weird shit happens around all those places. Mm -hmm. So, I'm wondering, the reason why these guys stay super hidden is because they travel and, like, live in the cave systems. And that's probably why they made it all the way to Wyoming, because they could just travel in the caves. So, like, the underground tunnels per, tunnels per se. Yeah. Huh. Because there's a lot of those in that area, because it's, like, high desert because of the volcanic eruptions. Fascinating. Stuff. So, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, oh, that might be a thing. Like, travel from place to place through volcanic tubes and caves. Yeah, because they're little guys, so even if there's, like, a not very big opening that, like, something that we couldn't fit in, like, they probably can and do. Ha! Huh. So. Interesting. So, these little, these little dwarves, mm -hmm. they're not cute little dwarves, like, no. like, Snow White. They scary. They, they sound like... You know, like little cannibal assholes. They're little cannibalistic assholes. So, Stay away from them. Yeah. Stay away from the volcanic craters mm -hmm. and apparently caves. Also, don't go alone in this area because, so there's been some interesting anomalies that have happened in mm. the Waikiki Mountain area. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's kind of up to everybody's interpretation whether or not. It, I'm sure there's logical explanations for everything, but also it's like, hmm, what's going on here? So there's three or four cases that I have found all within the last four years, um, or like 2017 to now, so that's how many? Six? 
Ah, God, <laughs> time is happening. So we'll start within 2019. Um, I'm happy to have stumbled upon this channel. So there's an, a YouTube channel. They're called Muskrat Outdoors. Um, it's a really wholesome, like, uh, like mountaineering couple. Uh, the dude looks like a prospector. And they're, mm -hmm. like, so knowledgeable about, like, trapping and hunting. Um, so if you're into that, check them out. Um, but I, just even watching this video, it started out as an educational video. Um, so what happened was that um, he and his wife set up bear traps, like, just kind of in the thick of it. So they're in a forested area in around here. So not in the high desert, but, like, close to the, in the forest. Um, and they set out bear traps and bait for the bear traps. And so, and then they set up cameras and they were like, okay, we're going to catch this bear. Um, and so they waited a couple days and they're like, we should go check on the traps because there was no camera activity. So they go out to where they set the traps and most of the bait was gone, but they don't have any activity on the camera of any, like not even like a raccoon or something. Coyote, like nothing. What kind of bait were they using? Do we know? I don't know that for certain, but I'm assuming like probably like fish or because that can get really stinky. Like if they're trying to trap a bear. Yeah. Some hmm. other animals. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then that. But like a lot of the bear, like because grizzlies, ugh, I only know that they eat fish. I don't really know. They probably eat deer, elk, I'm assuming. I don't know. <laughs> Look at me, knowing stuff. But um, no, I, I don't know what bait they're using, but they go out and then they find that most of it is gone. And they have no evidence as to what took it. And so they're already like, this is kind of weird. And so they're walking around the area and they find like a little bit of a clearing. And this guy finds just like something very unusual. And he goes over by a tree and he finds like one of those giant, like late 1800s, like milk canisters, like the big, big fuckers. Um, and it was like in really good condition. Um, and he was like talking about it too, because he wanted to have some for like the oils and like the hmm. stuff that he uses to tan the, the hides of the animals that he hunts. Um, but they're all rusted out usually, but this one was not, it was in really good condition. And so he like got it, opened it. And then he found, um, I think it was six pelts of animals and they were skinned. Um, but they weren't tanned yet. They were like stretched out and chemically treated. So that way it would be preserved. So they were um, rotting. So a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was like, he said that they were probably left there for about like a month, month and a half. Ew. Cause they were like getting a little moldy, but they weren't like decomposing. Um, and it was like really weird too, because he was like pulling them out and they were all like long and stretched out. Was, the, the tails were like attached. So you could see what, uh, animals, but it was like a couple of muskrat, a couple of badgers, some foxes and like six coyotes. Wow. Coyotes. So... I was like interesting. The combo he was saying was like really interesting just because like a lot of hunters don't usually hunt coyotes. Um, just because they're like scavengers. They're actually like hunters' friends, quote unquote. So Yeah. But I mean actually here in Idaho, like sometimes you do they do hunt coyotes because we get such an abundance of coyotes. Yeah. And like out in um like the Homedale area and stuff like that. Oh, okay. There's a lot of coyotes out there and there's a whole lot of people who live out there. Like they've got small towns and yeah. communities and everything. And so, right. and these guys are surrounded by vast land and there's so many kids. And so you get a coyote in your yard. You, I mean, they're, they're going to go after your babies. And so, yeah, or your chickens or whatever. Well, so. absolutely. Your yeah. livestock and everything like that. And so I can understand why yeah. coyotes do get hunted. And he said that like all of the pelts were worth like a couple hundred bucks, like it, as they were, um, especially the fox one. The fox one was like, like he was like, it's really rare to get it in like, cause it was like an older hmm. fox. Um, I, I, you'll have to look at his video cause I don't know anything about that. But, um, so the main thing was that he was super weirded out. He goes in the woods all the time. He sees, I'm sure probably a lot of stuff, but he was like, this is super weird. 
So he pulls out all the all the pelts and he's like, well, I'm taking this canister. This is in great condition. That was just tied to this tree. Um, but he doesn't know why someone would go through all of that effort and then just leave the pelts. Right. Just leave them there. It's like, even if you were going to come back for them, it's like, obviously it didn't come back in time because they were starting to decompose. So interesting. Yeah. And also he was saying that like the, um, the skinning of the animals wasn't like the best. So maybe a little primitive quote unquote. Um, but I don't know, like you said, there's like a lot of surrounding communities in that area. Maybe someone was doing a little bit of illegal hunting. Who knows? Yeah. So that was the first weird incident. And then, so there's three cases of missing people um, in, like, roughly within the few same couple of years Mm -hmm. um, that are, like, really interestingly related, but also not related. Um, Something that I was surprised to find out is that Idaho has, like, a really low amount of missing people. It's, like, 80 people. Which, like, 80 people is 80 people, but also, like, in the country, there's, like, 40,000 missing people, like, at one time. So, I was, like, really shocked at how low that was. And then also, like, just the few missing people in the Oahis were, like, it's, it's, like, very rare that that happens, which I found interesting. Yeah. Um, so, um... You're blowing into the oh, mic. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, two missing people, um, and their cases range from like 2017 to now, so about within the last six years. So Matt Schultz and Kathy Jo Jones, they both went missing in the Oahis, and then their bodies were recovered there. Um, so they were reported deceased but there is no statement of the condition of the bodies. So we don't know cause of death and we don't know. So their bodies were recovered. Yeah, but that's it. They were just like, bodies were recovered. End of story. But no cause of death. Nope. And also like the condition, how long they had been out there, why they were out there. Hmm. The Kathy Jo really freaked me out because she was, you know, had a lifelong battle with mental illness and, like, other, like, chronic illness conditions. And one night, she just said to her husband, I'm going to the mountains to see Jesus. And she left. And then the next morning, did not come back. And so her husband was like, get, (laughs) calls the police. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting that there's no... um... That there's no cause of death mm-hmm. that was reported for them. I don't even know what to say about that, honestly. Yeah, so that 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 kind of, like, because they're two, it, they didn't happen, like, right after each other, but, like, roughly within the same, like, couple years. But it was, like, these people had families. Like, with Kathy Jo, it was, like, okay, she was clearly battling some stuff. Um, but, yeah, with Matt Schultz, he was, like, a family man. You know, um, so they, for him, they suspect that he fell down one of the, um, the cliffs cause he really liked drones, I guess. And so he was like, who suspects that his family. So the families don't even know no. a cause of death. Mm-mm. Like just poof. Yeah. And there's no, cause like, hmm. I'm sure when your family is going through something so traumatic, when you find out that one of your loved ones has been found dead, um, you know, you don't want people being in your business about that. But right. it's just like both of those, it was just like they were found. End of, end of story, period. That's all. That's it. So I found weird. that to be super weird. Um, don't know how that correlates to the dwarves. Well, unless they're trying to, to cover, cover something, something up. up. That's what right? I thought, too. Because also, it's like, we're kind of getting to the point now, I feel like, where it's like, you can't just say animals. Well, you're right. You Everything's an animal animals attack. animals do. And also, it's not super common. It's like, it happens for sure, but it's like, not as common as, like, the law enforcement wanted to put the paperwork on it, you know? Right. So 
But that's just also me kind of with my tinfoil hat on a little bit. But, like, I just found that to be super weird because it was both similar. Like, they just kind of got lost out there and then no one knows why. No one knows why they died. No one knows how long they were out there. That was just it. Um, one that's still kind of ongoing, and so I kind of wanted to put this on for, like, awareness, just in case anyone knows, but in 2019, in February, um, the Rose family was driving in the winter over the mountain pass, and then their car got stuck, and so, uh, it was, uh, Eric, his wife, which I can't remember her name, and then they have their one-year-old with them, Eric got out of the car and he goes, I'm gonna go look for help, you guys stay put, and so he didn't come back for a long time and so she got her survival mode instincts on got out of the car found a cabin nearby broke into the cabin and then they had like survival supplies there so she was able to survive for a long enough to get help and then she and her baby were able to get out but he's still gone still missing he's still missing i haven't found any follow-up on if he was recovered when, you know, and obviously it was in the middle of a blizzard in the mountains. So yeah, good fucking luck trying to find somebody out there. But also it's just like, he has not been found. It's been four years. So. Wow. So if you know anything about that, I, I don't know, you know, just in case <laughs> putting it out there, like to help this family, if you know anything, like please report it. Um, Hawaii County Sheriff's Department. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, no, those those are the three people that I have found that have gone missing and no one, like, two of them got recovered, but we don't know anything about it. And then Eric Rose is still missing. Wow, that's really sad. Yeah, it's sad. Big old question mark. Yeah. Because it's like, obviously, like, the folklore, it's like, ooh, wee, ooh, but it's also, it's like, why are all of these things happening also? Are they related? How are they related? Well, Yeah. It, yeah, it does cause a question mark because yeah. first thing you want to, I mean, first thing a person like me wants to do is turn to the lore and mm -hmm. turn to the skinwalkers and the dwarfs and oh, yeah. like all the little, the spookyukis out there. You, that's the first place you want to turn if there's like no explanation. After this amount of time, we'd be able to find something. You know? Well, sure. And why is there not going to be a rhyme or reason to somebody's death. They just died. Just, there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. Like, mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sort of sense. I, I, I was, I didn't know what I was going to find on this, and it could just be nothing. It was just, like, weird coincidence, but I'm like, this is a very weird coincidence, especially in this area, especially because not very many people annually go missing here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's Which not. I was also shocked by because, like, the statistics of people going missing in, like, national parks and, like, the Appalachians, like, hundreds of people just evaporate off the planet. So I was yeah. just expecting there to be, like, oh, yeah, tons of people go missing here. But, like, not really. Yeah, it's not a lot. And a lot of times they're found. But we do have people that do go missing. Like, there's one that we're still looking for that is super near and dear to my heart. And I'm actually going to do a story on it, so I'm not going to talk all about it. But mm -hmm. five-year-old little boy disappeared mm -hmm. in July of 2021. Oh. And, oh, this sweet little, sweet little guy. But... He is still missing, and he disappeared from Fruitland, which is just not too far away. But I will be doing a story on that one at a later time. Okay. And we don't know. Could be the dwarves. Well, it wasn't the dwarves. No. 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 Not for the little kid. Not for this little dude. Mm -hmm. No. No. But that's what I have for today. What do you... Yeah, is that no, it that's you? it. It's just a big old mystery. <laughs> Question mark. We, we love those here, don't we? We do. <laughs> we do. And thank you so much for listening to Mystery Loves Company. And we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining, Misfits. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. After all, Mystery Loves Company.